Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Megan. Uh, first off, thank you all for joining us. We have two amazing guests here. Uh, Ken Byers, he graduated in 2001, I believe, uh, Penn State here, and then Chioma, she graduated a few years later, but uh, both have really uh, great bios and have done a lot of great things in the industry, but I'm going to turn it over to them first off uh, so they can tell you a little bit about themselves before we get into the discussion. Thanks, Ben. I can lead it off. Uh, Chioma, I'll, I'll just give a little background on myself and then kick it over to you. So yeah, as Ben said, um, I graduated in 2001 um, and I was in the school of communications. Um, advertising was my focus um, with a business minor, excuse me, with a minor business. Um, and we can talk about this a little bit more. I was really involved in AAF, which is American Advertising Federation. Um, and also personally, I play music, always did back in school. Um, so that's always been a passion that's uh, stayed alive in me. Um, and then um, I, I don't know whether we'll have other questions to get into background, but right now I um, am the founder and run an agency called Confidant. Um, and I'm in Nashville now. Um, we have offices in Nashville and New York, but I'll, I'll save other points until uh, more questions are asked. Wonderful. My name is Chioma Aduba. Um, I graduated in 2004, so that makes Ken my senior when I was a freshman. Um, I majored in journalism, uh, so also in the School of Communications and minored in Spanish. Um, I had a slightly different kind of path trajectory. I was a student athlete, so I spent a lot of my time uh, doing that. I ran track and field, um, but also did a lot of, you know, some internships and other things um, and was all involved in the university in, in, in other ways. Um, but all of it, my entire experience, collective experience at Penn State, absolutely, I think, you know, shaped, you know, my, my entry and certainly the longevity of my career um, afterwards. Um, I live in New York. I work at McCann, New York, um, and I run our uh, business leadership department. That's, you know, our account management department uh, there. And I also run a couple global pieces of business. Um, so, yeah. All right. Thank you for that. So Chioma, I know you said you were a journalism major. How did that kind of shape your advertising career and how did that kind of lend itself to advertising? Yeah. I mean, it was wonderful. I think a lot of what advertising and marketing is, is really being able to kind of, you know, construct a sound argument and that I learned the, like the tenets of that craft for sure at, at Penn State and I think for certainly early in my career uh, being able to you know just communicate anything you know what I mean whether it's just how to navigate problems or really you know articulate a point of view or why this work matters um, all come from you know being you know in the school of communications and really understanding you know how to kind of get your point across and also be a little bit persuasive and motivating um, in the way that you do it. Um, so it was, it, was, it was hugely helpful. So Chioma, I know you were uh, a student athlete, so you didn't have all the time in the world, but Ken, you mentioned AAF. What were some of the clubs that you were involved in during your time outside AAF, including AAF? Yeah, so, um, I mean, uh, I'll start start with AAF, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if any of you are involved in that, um, I'll give a little background of it, but it's American Advertising Federation. And um, at the time, uh, I mean, this goes back 21, 22 years, makes me feel really old. Um, I guess some of you weren't born yet, which makes me feel even older. But um, so I think um, at the time we, we, every year there would be um, a brand that would issue a challenge um, that a bunch of different schools competed in that challenge. So one of the years, the challenge was getting college kids to read the New York Times. Um, and this is when you actually got a physical paper. So that was challenge number, the first year that I worked on it in my junior year. And then my senior year, it was um, Daimler Chrysler was the, the brand. And the challenge was, I think they had screwed up their merger of Daimler and Chrysler automotive brand. And they were wanting to know from different college students uh, programs, what, you know, what would be a good relaunch of the Daimler Chrysler brand. But what that ended up being was we would compete against all kinds of other schools, Syracuse and George Washington and all these other schools, mostly from the Northeast, I believe. And we would go to New York and we would pitch against each other. And it was a real, it felt like a real 
thing, like the, what we really do in the industry where you're really pitching against other agencies. And um, so that was a big focus, especially in my spring semester each year. Um, uh, and I learned so much from it. And again, we can talk about this a little bit more, but once I was out interviewing, um, I would talk at length about what I did in AAF and then I had some internships too. So internships in AAF were, um, were a huge part of the story that I, I had to tell when I was interviewing. So, um, and I, I'll just tell a little side story of that, that my pitch in spring of 2001 was in the World Trade Center in May of 2001. And um, uh, my family had come and watched us. And, and sometime um, I then moved to New York and my first day in New York, uh, my first day of um, after Labor Day of sort of day-to-day -day life was actually 9-11, 2001. Um, I was showing up at 8.30 a.m. for um, a class that I had in New York, and that's where I watched the buildings fall. And so it was just kind of crazy. But right after that, um, my parents got some film developed that had just been sitting in the camera for a while. And it turned out that it was all this, these shots of our competition in the World Trade Center after they had fallen. So it was just very surreal. So that's has nothing to do with anything we're talking about, but a little interesting side note about AAF. No, that's an interesting little side note. So um, I know you guys came from different backgrounds, uh, but what were some of the most important skills you learned or lessons you learned while at Penn State? You want to take a chum or you want me to sure. jump in? Sure. No, I think the, the things that I learned the most at Penn State that I kind of took with me um, into the workforce was obviously, you know, hard work. I think that is something that you just can never, ever underestimate anywhere, you know, especially in those early years being at an agency, you know, being having that, you know, sense of urgency and excitement and passion for what you're doing. Um, I think it's just like vibrant in Penn State. And it's something that, you know, is, I mean, in your major, but even in the university, just like passion and excitement, you know, and you want to bring that everywhere. Um, the second thing I would say is like this notion and feeling of collaboration, being able to work with a lot of different people with lots of different points of views who come from different places and, you know, really being able to kind of coalesce all that thinking, I think is incredibly important also. And that happens at every level when you're working at an agency, whether it's coming up with ideas or trying to make something happen. Um, but that's really important. You know, I, I, I grew up in a very small you know, suburban Massachusetts town where I graduated and I knew every single one of those graduates from when I was in kindergarten. You know, you know how you think, they know how they work, you know, they TikTok pizza, you've all gone to eat at the same pizza every Friday night. So suddenly being thrust into a university that's 40,000 strong, you know, who didn't all have that same, you know, upbringing that didn't all have that same, you know, way of working. And to just really be able to just, you know, kind of navigate and, you know, be who you are, but also kind of like understand everyone else is, is hugely important. So I think those are kind of the, the major things. It's just like working hard, passion, urgency, but also the ability to kind of just like open your eyes and, you know, um, be aware of, of other people and thinking about like, how can our, how can our opinions all make, make, make work and idea and thinking stronger and smarter and sharper. I'll pick up on some of those themes. I mean, hard, hard work, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, you guys have all worked hard throughout school, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, I mean, you never stop learning. So I, once you come into the, the workplace, um, I, in a way I, I became even more hungry to learn and even more hungry to just work hard. Um, cause you just feel, you know, you feel a sense of wanting to use every day well to get ahead, you know, make a little more money, hopefully, all of those things, you, you want to work hard. And, and yeah, collaboration is huge. Um, you know, in some ways, all throughout school, you know, there are team projects. But, you know, I found that once I came into the workplace, um, yeah, in a way, it really put me in with a really mixed group of people in terms of backgrounds, like Chioma was saying. And, um you know, I had that in, in my, in my studies, but it just was sort of throttled once I got into the workplace of just really trying to navigate differences of opinion, different people having different, um, 
sort of uh, agendas that they're trying to have. So I think that there's the, the, the idea of collaboration, um, it's like, it's a strong muscle that you come out of school with, but um, in some ways in the workplace, you have to use that to start really bridging um, vast different ex levels of experience of the people that you're working with and having to really figure out how to find common ground. And it's a, it's a real, you know, it's tricky. It's tricky. The other thing I would add is, um, and Chioma maybe hit on this a little bit when she was talking about journalism major, but like uh, so much is about, you know, the ideas that you have, but also being able to present those ideas in a way that's compelling to people. Um, and so I think that's another thing that I really had to learn in the advertising industry, at least that you kind of come out thinking, oh, I want to, you know, I have a brief of how we're going to like get XYZ product to the consumer, but it's even harder to sell your client on why that's a good idea. So there's just like a real sort of intellectual logic rigor that you have to, to develop and hopefully have developed, but you'll continue to develop it. Um, but it's, it's fun. I still love what I do all these years later. So I, you know, I'm not knocking the hard work part of it. So I know we, we certainly have a few journalism students in here with us right now. Chioma, you know, you studied journalism in school. How did you go about that transition? What was that like? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, yeah, I studied journalism. I had no like inkling of advertising at all. I, my first year after school, um, I worked in the athletic department doing marketing for football and basketball. And that was the first time I really thought about maybe there, maybe I might be a little bit more interested in doing something slightly tangential in the, in the marketing world. Um, and when I moved to New York city, you know, I got an opportunity to work at an ad agency and, you know, it was like, you know, it's like a really great first date, you know, I was like, this is where I'm, this is where I'm meant to be. So, um, that's how I did that. But the transition was honestly really seamless. And I think, you know, like I said, I think in those early stages, you know, the things that are most important are that, you know, you learn, you know, that how to how to think and create a really strong argument. And when you're in those early interviews, when you're really young, I really think that people are just really trying to gauge, you know, how does your mind work? How does your brain work? And all the things that you're bringing up are just stimulus. So it's like, you know, you can talk about an inter internship, you know, you can talk about, you know, an athletics, you can talk about your journalism major. And I think they're really just trying to get the crux to the crux of just like, you know, are you a strong thinker? You know, are you a savvy person? Are you a quick study? You know what I mean? Are you, are, you know, and again, are you passionate and hungry and, you know, have some urgency around you? Um, so that transition I was able to make pr pretty well. And, um, Journalism is, a, I think, a super strong background to be in because of the, the writing of it, you know, and just be it just really makes you an excellent communicator. And even better if you can take, you know, that written communication off this off the page and be, you know, a really great orator, you know, then it's like off to the races. But um, yeah, I, I think the transition was 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 fine and well. And, you know, I didn't have a, have a ton of problem. I think I still got a, like an enormous amount of skill and craft coming out of that discipline. So that's I a know, huge point, by the way, writing and verbal communication, huge. So just to put a pin in that. <laughs> um, so I know, Ken, you talked about AAF a lot and how that benefited you in interviews and things like that. Chioma, obviously, you, know, you were the student athlete, but how important are extracurricular activities for college students? And uh, are there any that you would recommend that students get involved in? I'll jump in there. I mean, I think it's huge. I think that, um, you know, college is a, is a total experience and life is a total experience, right? So um, to this day, I'm still trying to make sure that I'm balancing the work that I do with the, the, the other things that I love. Um, so what, whatever it is, I think that there's a huge part of just sort of claiming what's yours, you know, claiming, you know, knowing where you're serious about hard work and the work that you're doing, but, um, but also if there's things that are really important to you, the reality is at the end of the day, whether you're hanging out with friends or you're applying for a job, you know, you're, you're a person and people want to know, want to relate to you on, on that most basic level. And I just find that the people who come in who have 
have invested time into the things that they know and love and care about, they just, they jump off, they, they jump out from other people who are sort of telling you what maybe you want to hear or something like that. So never underestimate the, the other things that you're putting your time against. Yeah, I, I think that's so true. Like you spend so much time talking about and thinking about being a well-rounded person when you want to get into college. You don't think that that's as important when you're exiting college, but it really, really is. You know, when you have those interviews and meetings and stuff like that, it's like exactly what, you know, Ken said. It's like, you're talking to another human being, you know, who wants to make sure that you're a, a full, complete person. You know, I, I still ask people all the time when, when I'm interviewing, you know, what are you reading? You know, what do you follow on, on, on social media? You know, just cause it's like, you know, a big part of what we do also is like so ingrained in like the culture too, that it's like, you know, you want to make sure that people have got like a, a beat on that and are out in the world that we're talking to. So one of the things that is harped on us here at Penn State is how big the network is, you know, largest network of alumni in the nation, things like that, and how you need to take advantage of networking. So how important is networking both as a college student and as an industry professional such as yourselves? I mean, I think I took the very pedantic, you know, way of, of networking. I took that, uh, the, the Penn State, you know, network thing, like very literally. So like, I'm, sh I'm sure they still do this, but I don't know. But when I graduated, you got a year membership to the Alumni Association. And with that membership came, you know, access to the, the Rolodex, you know, so I was like at my computer, like emailing anyone in with anything, any semblance of an interesting job asking for coffees. You know, and that's how I got all my jobs, you know, in, in the beginning, um, these poor you know, Penn State alumni taking pity on me and meeting me on some park bench somewhere, you know, and passing my resume around somewhere. So, um, I mean, network can mean a lot of things, you know, but I for sure took it very literally. And even that was was hugely helpful um, in terms of just like outreach and talking to people. But, you know, you can obviously go a couple of clicks deeper, too. Yeah, I, I I didn't get the memo that we got we got that. So I, <laughs> in retrospect, I wish that I did what Chioma did, but um, but I did try, and I remember adding names to spreadsheets of just like anyone and everyone that um felt like it was in an area that I was interested in. I mean, you gotta don't don't be bashful. You know, you you need. There are some people who advocate for people, and there are some people who who don't. And I think that just because you reach out to a whole bunch of people, sometimes you won't hear back from people, but you know, every once in a while you'll find people who just really love giving back. They love helping. They love just connecting people. And if you can find those connectors, it can be a really, really helpful thing. Um, I mean, although I didn't do uh sort of any like formal networking through Penn State, for sure, I was you know, any, any name of alumni that came across, um, that felt, you know, felt like it was a, a good fit. I was definitely chasing that down. To be honest, I don't remember how I got my first job. So, you know, I don't, I don't remember what the linkage was, but I will say, like Chioma said, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in informational interviews. So as much as you can search for job postings, do more than that. Look for, companies that you really like look for anybody who seems interesting and just try and ask if you can do a zoom call with them or if you're in town try and see if you can do coffee with them i mean it's actually easier now with zoom i we didn't have that when i was looking so i was like begging to go on a park bench and have coffee with somebody but you know not everyone will say yes not everybody will respond but you know just go for it you only live once right so you gotta just go for it Hundred percent. And one of the things you talked about the other day, and can you actually mention this, was like the notion of like having like meaningful connections, you know. And I think networking takes on like, I mean, we're talking about in these initial stages, but as your career grows and goes on, like networking will become even more and more important. But it won't be just these like flash emails that you know that are going to matter. It's going to be the, the 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 slightly deeper relationships. So another thing that you know a lot of people at Penn State talk to us about is internships. And I know some students can feel pressure about landing an internship or not having an internship or when they should start interning at places. So how important are internships for young students who are inter interested in the field? And uh, what were some of the internships you guys had as college students? 
I can jump in on that. So um, I, I'm a big believer in internships. I mean, it, it, you know, in interviews, people love talking about, the interviewee loves talking about internships. So um, my first inter internship, oddly enough, um, was where Ben is interning this summer. It's called Tierney, uh, which is very random that this was the case, but it's called Tierney. It's an ad agency in Philadelphia. Um, I did that in the summer after my sophomore year. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even know what it was before I got into the junior year major. So I maybe did it. I was a little crazy. I did it where I just really, I didn't know even what the, the different departments did. So, uh, but they were gracious and that was okay. You know, I met great people and I, I learned whatever I could. Um, I, I then did another one the summer after my senior year um, at a, another ad agency in Philly that I don't think is any longer around. But um, uh, so, yeah, it was really, really useful to have internships. And I would say, you know, if you're a senior and you haven't had one, don't worry, don't, don't you know, it's okay, but if, if you have an opportunity to have one, or even if you are a senior and you haven't landed a job, maybe you can do one this summer. I mean, it's really, really useful experience. I don't think I got paid for my internships. I don't know, maybe there's like a law against that these days, I'm not sure, but I don't remember getting paid, but I, I really didn't care. I just wanted, I was just hungry. I just wanted to get in and get real experience. and. Um, it was really, really helpful and gave me some good talking points and helped me to stand out that much more. Yeah, I think internships hugely, hugely important. And if you can get them, then you absolutely should should do them and have that opportunity. It, it does what what I think an internship really does. It helps bridge the bridge the gap between like the some of the more philosophical stuff that you're learning and like the more like practical stuff that's happening inside the walls of an agency. So super important. I did not have a ton of internships. I had jobs because <laughs> I needed jobs <laughs> when I was young. You know, I was running, I was running tracks. So I didn't have like an, a lot of opportunity to make money. So if you don't, if you can't get an internship, and you know that's just not the situation where you, you can do that, um, I don't think it's it's not a huge reason to fret. I think again, like a lot of this stuff is stimulus to start a conversation to show the interviewer how you think. So if you had to work at the gap all summer, you know what I mean? Just start thinking about like how that connects to, you know, what this job might entail. Like you're dealing with customers all day. You're problem solving and troubleshooting. You know, you're trying to figure out, you know, how can you, I don't know, maybe you work on commission and you're trying to like sell, you know, something to someone in a way that doesn't make them feel bad about the thing that they just tried on, you know, like, so you're giving feedback, you know, I don't know, but like try to make those connections, you know, so that that can happen. Um, not everyone, you know, a lot of internships these days are, are also highly networked where it's like people's parents and neighbors and this person and get some of that so they can be very competitive and very difficult but if for some reason you can't get an internship or you need to go do something else you know just really start thinking and using it all again as stimulus as a way to show like how you think and how you've been able to you know navigate tough situations and now that's super applicable to whatever you're whatever you're looking for now so i know you guys both worked in new york city chioma you still work in new york city ken you have an office in new york city with your agency um Going back to the start of your career when you first got to the Big Apple, they call it the Big Apple for a reason, right? So did you feel prepared for your role there in that huge city coming out of Penn State? Um, prepared and not prepared in different ways. You know, I would say I felt prepared. I knew I was a capable, smart kid person entering that job did I know all the like and again I didn't study advertising and I didn't have like a host of internships did I know all the verbiage and the language no did they send me down to the studio to pick up a deck and I had no idea what that was and when they gave it because you had to go to the studio then to print it I thought it was a ream of paper yes I pretty much had a television and I knew that the stuff they played in between was advertising like that was like my baseline understanding but I knew I, I knew I was smart and I knew I was willing to work hard, you know, and I knew I was a great collaborator. And I think those are the things that I rested on. These are all the things that you guys, you know, are learning at Penn State. And so, you know, prepared is a tricky word, you know. I think that, you know, there's there's could I have, you know, aced a, a test on, you know, advertising jargon? No. But did I feel equipped? Yeah, yeah. And did I know that I could I could get it and that I that did, did Penn State teach me how to learn and do it fast? Yeah, I knew and I knew that. 
I would say for me, I mean, I, I, I was energized by New York. I love New York. I still love New York. And so if you don't, not everybody has to go to New York, by the way. So it's like, if there's peer pressure to do it, but you're not excited about it, like figure out where you want to be like that. And I do think that things, you know, in some ways, New York is the center of the universe In other ways there's, there's, um, you know, the world has, has changed plenty. And even in COVID, I think things are more distributed now. So, um, but was New York formative for me? A hundred percent. New York was amazing. I was there for eight years. I loved every second of it. And, um, you know, there's great jobs in New York. So just pound for pound, getting a job in a good company like New York, you're, there's so much opportunity. It sounds stereo, stereotypical, but there's so much opportunity um, in terms of intellectual and sort of cultural stimulus. It's off the charts. You know, you have you're around people who are hustling just like you. So, you know, I had friends in investment banks. I had friends in media industry. I had friends in, you know, the arts I had, who all inspired me. So can that happen everywhere else? Yes, it can happen anywhere. For me personally, I, I it sort of juiced me coming out into my professional career, you know, really wanting to excel in what I'm doing and sort of feeding off of um, a lot of other people who are really hungry too. So I think New York can be really great. Um, in terms of the, um, uh, how challenging it was, I mean, for sure there were aspects of, you know, early years, like whatever I was getting paid and whatever size apartment I had and whatever, you know, um, roommates I had uh intended or unintended little roommate running across the floor or something so you know you run into all kinds of um sort of hard knocks type stuff in um in New York that you know everybody talks about for me that was kind of part of the fun um I would say in the workplace I found coming into the workplace I found personally I had to adjust to just like sitting at a desk all day that actually was like the hardest part for me was I just it just really took you know you're used to moving between classes and hanging out with friends and just being nine to five or nine to 10 p.m or whatever whatever it was um just being in an office being um that was a big adjustment for me. So um, I think I would just say, go after the, you know, go after what you want to go after, whether it's New York or elsewhere. And, you know, it'll be an adjustment for sure. Um, and you, you won't know all the ways that it'll be an adjustment, but that's all part of the learning process and part of figuring out ultimately the stepping stones you want to start moving across. That's maybe the last thing. Your first job is not your last job. So try and find a great first job or take a really good first job or even take a good first job and use it for all it's worth and use it to figure out the stepping stone that it is. Cause it is there, there will be many stepping stones. So I know you guys both got your start on the agency side of thing. I think, can you then transition to some in-house or client side, a Chioma, you're still agency. Another one of the questions that, people going to the advertising field are faced with, or, you know, do you want to go agency? Do you want to go client side? Did you guys feel like there was any benefit to you um, for starting out agency side? And do you think that is the correct order agency then client side? I, I personally think agency to client is a good order to go. Um, I think, I think you see a lot more often people moving, starting in an agency and going client, then you do see people go starting in client going agency. Um, agency, you get to work on a variety of different clients, which can be really, um, really good. Um, agencies have a really strong creative culture, which is really, really nice if, if that appeals to you. Um, I always think of agency as um, agencies tend to question everything. Um, agencies tend to be more like disruptive and, um, uh, disruptive in a good way, hopefully, um, clients 
client organizations tend to be a bit more conforming. They tend to be a bit more potential groupthink. So there's something in the DNA of agencies that is exciting, um, uh, was for me at least, um, that then when I went client side, and I, I went, I started at Ogilvy in New York. Um, uh, well, I had, I started at, at a Dentsu agency in New York, then went to Ogilvy, um, and then client side, I went to Sony Electronics on the West Coast. Um, so when I came into Sony in-house, I sort of, I felt like everyone else was a bit more conforming, you know, group think. And I felt like I had like a, an ability to come in with just like good questions, good divergent thinking. Um, ultimately, I, I have now come back agency, agency and started my own agency, but that that's probably more rare that, you know, that people move that way to agency, if only because, um, I don't know, client side can, early years client side can maybe have more stable hours than the agency world. Um, so that's the thing. Too. As, as a current client, not of yours, they're just chiming, they were probably shitty clients and then nobody wants to go on the receiving end of that. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, well, I will also say there, there are client organizations that have like, if they have good sort of like emphasis on training, yeah, that can be a good thing. So I would say that could maybe trump some of what I, what I'm saying. Um, uh, anyway, there's two different paths to it for sure. Yeah. I don't think there's a wrong way. I think that it's like a lot of it is like what part of the brain is, is gets you most excited. You know what I mean? If you're someone, and Ken said it exactly right, like there's something really special about agency culture. So if you're like really motivated and excited about culture and being really close to the work, the creativity, then agency is a, a wonderful place to be. If you're a little bit more like bigger picture or a little bit more, you know, like analytical perhaps, or a little bit more, um, I don't know, I'm running out of adjectives. Um, maybe client side is, is a little bit, is a bit better for you. You know, I've always, I, I always like being close to the work, even in an agency, when I felt like I was in roles, I was a little bit further from the work. I was like, I got to get back closer to the work. Like, you know, um, so I think it, it can really, it really just depends on what I think ex excites you um, more and maybe perhaps what, you, what you're good at too. Uh, not to inter can I interject a question? Yeah. A question too. So, Ken and Jim, it might be helpful to talk maybe about some some of the examples of types of work or projects you're touching today as as a little bit of an example um, to the types of things that you're doing. They, they've these guys have heard me drone on about like my boring projects uh, that I'm doing, and I, I will say as as a marketer, all the fun stuff we give to agencies to do, like we brief it and then outsource it. Um, and so I think it would be fun for the guys to like, like everybody hear a little bit of the types of projects and work. Uh, that your teams do. Sure, I, I can jump in there really quick. So, um, one of our big clients is actually Sony. So when I left Sony, they kept coming around, um, uh, which is helpful when you're starting an agency. Um, so with that, we we have done over the years, over the last five or so years, a lot of work on the, their headphones. So. Uh, we've worked across all their product groups, their cameras, alpha cameras, um, headphones, but usually it, it it's sort of campaigns. It's basically like we'll do a big campaign where there will be a whole like underlying idea to it. Um, that's sort of a, a message that we're trying to get across. And um, so we'll pitch concepts. We'll go through a lot of rounds of them choosing which ones they like. We'll do refinement rounds on that. And then we'll start planning production. We'll go shoot it. We'll, and then we'll sort of make it all into all the shapes and sizes that it needs to be. And that can be TV. It can be out of home. It can be websites. It can be everything, uh, any way that you're seeing um, a brand. Um, other brands that we work on, um, Sony is a big one. Amazon is a big one. Um, we're doing a lot with Amazon Fresh right now just did a shoot last week in Chicago. Um, uh, so, you know, we're, we're always in some level of sort of planning, pitching, producing, um, uh, other brands, Shake Shack, Birchbox, um, Bonza, Chickpea Pasta. What else? I don't know. There's a bunch of them, but 
It, it's really, yeah, there's just a, there's a blend of clients. We're a small agency. So this will maybe, you know, you, you can push your pool us versus what Chioma is doing in a giant agency. You know, I'm working on like 10 different clients, um, jumping across them, which is, I find really fun. Um, but eventually the bigger the things get, the more the sort of division of labor starts to separate and you have very def more defined lanes and more defined client, defined client that you're working on. Ken's got a lot of fun stuff happening for sure. Um, <laughs> so what, I mean, some of the stuff we're working on and I just come, came back from leave. So I'm going to share an example from before. Um, but one of my, well, first I want to just say that, like, I think you just have to advertising has changed so much and you guys probably all know this but like for me like I, I really really believe that cre creativity has the power to change the world so yes of course we are we are promoting brands and products and all of these things but it's like we live in a world now where it's like you know people and consumers care about what you care about you know and every single day they're out there casting their vote and they're doing it with their dollar so it's like you have to draw a line in the sand and really show the show consumers what you as an organization believe in so one of the pieces of um, work that i really love is um for for mastercard we've had mastercard for many many years and um we launched not only a campaign but it was also a product and it was called true name and we had uncovered this insight and, and mastercard has largely been a huge supporter of the lgbtqia plus community and um we had you know had saw this insight after a series of um interviews that you know the transgender community were basically, you know, and everybody knows like huge can be hugely dangerous and, you know, lots of, you know, assaults and horrible things that happen. But when they go to use their credit card and the name on the card doesn't, you know, isn't matching what, you know, maybe that cashier or whoever is seeing that it's like a very vulnerable moment. Um, and so we launched this product and it's called True Name. We're on the front of your card. It's, it's, it's your true name. It's your name. Um, not, not whatever's on your license or whatever's, you know, written in some government office, but, but your name and how you identify. And that was a product that we, we developed and obviously an entire campaign around it, but, you know, that also kind of like shed some light and brought some awareness, um, to the issue, but also, you know, created something that was transformative and had impact on a community that we as an agency and a brand care so much about. So I, I think like, that's why I'm saying like, you know, it's two things. It was, it was communications for sure. But it was also product development, which I think is even almost the more important part because that's where you're doing something. That's where you're driving change, um, and that's you know a piece of work that I you know feel super passionate and um, and uh, really proud of. So Ken, this question's for you here, talking a little bit about your agency. How did you know it was time, or you were at that stage in life where you were going to be getting into creating your own agency and becoming that kind of entrepreneur? Um, you know, for me, um, I always sort of had an inkling that I wanted to start something at some point. And, and for a long time, I, I would come up with ideas and start, you know, some app idea or some business plan for something. And I, I was always trying to sort of write them out. And um, uh, at some point, I think I started, I had enough random ideas that I started to mine my own experience and say well where do I make the most sense you know where where do I have experience that is like a little less hard than some of than just starting over from scratch not that what I'm doing isn't hard but it where I'm not just going into an industry that I don't know at all and the more I thought about it the more I thought well I mean it I do I do love being an advertising agency and no matter how many times I've sort of questioned at times, you know, in, in inflection points, is this what I want to be doing? Which you will probably do over the course of your career, you'll have inflection points where you question everything, which is okay. So I definitely have many inflection points and it's always sort of brought me back to what I'm doing is what I want to be doing. Um, and so I think as I started to think about starting my own business, it started to make more and more sense. Well, why wouldn't I start an agency? Cause that is what I know. That's what I do. And um, I think I have a knack for it. I think it's my experience, it's my natural inclination. Um, so I would say I sort of always had that inkling, but that doesn't mean you're gonna do it. So I will put myself in the category of, there was a chance I was never gonna do it. Um, I was about 35 and I kind of had this moment um, where I was, I had a kid now and I was 
I was kind of like, where, where am I going to be when I grow up? <laughs> and so I, I think that just became a, an inflection point where I, I was living in California. Um, I had lived in the Northeast. I'm from Philly. I lived in New York. I've been in California. Um, I think there was something about where am I going to sort of, where does it make sense for me to be? Um, where's, where, where do I have some community? And I now had some community in Nashville who had moved from various parts of the country. I knew that at 35, I, it was sort of like, if I don't do it now, I might never do it. And so it just was this sort of natural inflection point. Um, and oddly, I chose to come to Nashville and I, I felt like Nashville was a good creative scene, but didn't, and was a city sort of growing and um, sort of the zeitgeist in a way. Like I felt that nine or 10 years ago. Um, but I felt like we're, that's very strange that it doesn't have any ad agencies that I know. Austin has it and Portland has it, but Nashville didn't have it. So, um, so that's really it. It really came down to an inflection point, you know, that was spurred on by sort of family and career blend. And then this, this feeling that there was maybe a, a moment in time happening here in Nashville, which has proved to be true, actually. It has been proved that it's really sort of exploded here. Um, and then my co-founder jumped in, who was in New York. Um, he was actually going to move to Nashville too. Um, and then he met a girl. She didn't want to move to Nashville. And so I was like, well, okay, I guess we have a New York office. So that was, that was really how we started. Um, and it's been six years now. So knock on wood, still standing. <laughs> So, you know, oftentimes you hear a story when talking to professionals such as yourselves that, you know, when you first get into the agency life, you know, it's a lot of long nights, you know, you're putting in a lot of, a lot of hard work. So was it easy for you guys or what was that like trying to find that work-life balance uh, originally and how long did it take for you to, to actually find that? Um, Do you have it, Gianna? Do you have work-life balance? I know. See, I still work for the man. Ken works for himself. So. <laughs> Yeah, that can be even worse. <laughs> Probably, actually. I may have a good I'm my own worst spot. Um, you know, I didn't actually find it bad at the beginning, you know, but I, like the first few years, I actually, I remember calling my mom going outside the agency and being like, mom, what I'm doing is so important. I have to stay all night till it gets done. Like, you know, like I was just very like wide eyed and like, you know, so no, those first years, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I have to say, like, the, the best friends I made in New York and still my very good friends to today were ones I made late night in an agency, you know, so I, I really enjoyed it. I think it got harder as um, other parts of my life began to take off, you know, and you'll, you, you know, and I think everyone on this call can just relate to that as, you, you know, you start to meet people, get married, have a chat, you know what I mean? Like, then it starts to become more difficult. Um, and I think it's just, you at some point just have to get to this place of like focus of like, you know, what's, you know, I worked at a PR once, a PR agency once and they used to say, you know, it's PR, not the ER. Like you start to, as things start to happen in your life, you'll start to slowly realize what, what's important will come into sharper and sharper focus as, you know, as you get older and the stakes get higher. Um, and you just have to, you know, I also, when I was 28, after doing this for a number of years, I totally left the business, quit my job and went backpacking through South America for a year because I was like, I'm going to figure out my life, you know, and I, and I can't, I wound, I took the long way around, but I, you know, I came back to advertising because I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, but I think it's just getting that balance right. And just knowing it's like, you can have it all, but maybe not all in the same day, you know? Yeah. I, I, I felt the same. I worked, I worked a lot in my first couple of years and, and that might sound like a bad thing to you guys, but there was an element of it where, yeah, you just work with at least, at least in, in the agency world at the time in New York, big agencies, like it, it just was like, you just, you just worked a lot of hours and that was okay. Cause it felt like it was fun people. It felt like intellectually stimulating. It felt like you're always sort of like about to get to the next mountaintop um which was which was fun um for me the gauge was always i've always played music so i've always been like i always have this voice in my head that's sort of like are you are you doing that are you doing that and so it at times 
there have been inflection points um, and there definitely have been loud inflection points that have sort of, I've had to at certain times been like, have I earned my stripes yet? Can I, can I balance a little bit? Like it did feel like I went from like, I'm, I'm working hard, I'm getting somewhere to there will be points where you have to say, have I put enough fuel in the tank that people trust me and they know I work hard and maybe I, I still work hard, but, but maybe I don't always every second have to prove that. <laughs> and so that, that was my own personal journey. And I would just say like, just, you know, you got to figure out what's right for you. You want to, you want to work hard. You want to try and, you know, fight your way into the roles that get you, that get you excited. Um, and that depending upon what that is, that can be a lot of hard work, but you know, don't let it dominate your life. Don't get, don't get at some point in your life where you realize you've missed something. So you got it. You got to have, you got to listen to those voices, you know? hundred percent. I just want to say one more thing on this topic. Um, Cause I think it's important. I, when I started in this business, my first job, I remember looking around the entire agency and all the very senior women, like all the jobs that I wanted, none of them had married and none of them had children. So like, I remember thinking very vividly, like, oh, if you want to be them, it comes at a great price. You know, it comes at a great cost. And that is not the case today. I mean, today I feel like I look around and I see, you know, like our chief creative officer of New York, she's also a woman and we're great friends and she has two children, you know, but years ago she would say she was the only mom in the entire creative department, you know? And so it, you, you just, you know, I do think you kind of have to fight a little bit for, for what you want and for that balance because it is important. And I think, Ken, you said it so beautifully just now that it's like, you know, make sure that like, you know, as, as you're working hard and that's so important that you, you know, but you haven't left something, you know, behind you that, you know, maybe could have given you a lot more, given you some, you know, like nourish your soul in another way too. Cause it, it all really, really, really is important. And it, it can be very easy to lose sight of that. So I know, you know, you guys were obviously successful, you know, young people in the advertising world. I know you told me you've hired you know, other young people in the advertising world, you've looked at plenty of resumes. So how do you stand out in, in uh, that world as a young person? Can you say that again? I was just reading a question from Jade here when you said that. Oh. Sorry. We can get to Jade's question. Do you want to take Jade's question now? says, what advice would you give for women entering the communications industry? I think that's directed towards me. No. Shilmar, <laughs> <laughs> I think that one's for you. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think meet other women, you know what I mean? Be, you know, like really lean into that. I just feel like we all have, have to, like, we can be such a powerful army, you know what I mean? If we, if we equip ourselves, right. You know, and it's like, you know, I, again, when I came into this industry, it's like, it's like guys were golfing and go, going out and doing whatever. And it's like, we need to create a lot of that for ourselves too. Um, and just also like, you know, my number one mantra always is like, you know, when you rise lift. So like, make sure that you're, you're also doing that for the women around you too. I'm also a huge believer in peer mentorship. So yes, I have a lot of people who I've watched coming up, um, you know, and have really, you know, helped me for sure. But I've also gotten such enormous amount of like guidance and really good steers and advice from my own peers at other agencies, you know, and other disciplines. And I think that is super important. Um, and just, you know, don't be afraid. Don't sh shrink down. You know what I mean? Like you deserve that seat at the table. You deserve to make as much as your, you know, your male counterparts are making. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Don't be afraid, you know, I just recently in the last five years learned very important lessons and it was the, the, it was merchandising myself and I didn't do it enough. And I think I paid a huge cost for that. You know, you do not be afraid to be in rooms and say, you know, ever so delicately, look what I did, you know, because oftentimes we don't do it enough. So just be proud of what you're doing and make sure people know what's happening. No, thank you for, for answering that for Jade there, Chioma. Um, so again, back to the question that I'd asked you, you guys, I know have hired plenty of people. You've looked at plenty of resumes. You guys were successful people in the industry, you know, at a young age as well. What is it, what does it take? Or, or what are some of the things that you notice, um, from young people to, to be successful in the industry? 
I think it's funny, right? As you're saying that, I got an email from a Michigan State student with a with a resume. I should analyze it to you guys. No, I'm just kidding. Um, forget about Michigan State. I'm going to delete that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think in terms of looking at, um, you know, when, when you're putting in a resume, um, you know, there's a lot of other people putting in resumes. So I would just say, like, how do you make the points that really stand out, like, stand out quickly? Um, you know, as much as you'd like people to be reading the whole thing, um, people are, are sort of perusing and, and skimming. So put the points that you want to make in bold or put them high up, somehow give, give prominence and hierarchy to that. Um, and going back to some of the things that we've talked about, like internships or um, the extracurricular things that, that really represent um, your hard work or your tenacity or your interest or whatever, you know, find a way to like make them headlines. I mean, it's the same as I'm sure what you learn in journalism or in advertising, it's the headlines. You got it. You got to lay on the headlines. And I would just, I would challenge you guys to think of like, what are the three headlines that you want people to know? And they won't see it unless you make them see it. Yeah, um, I don't really have much more to add. I mean, just I think simple, succinct, you know, you people be, have a tendency to over explain, you know, and I think like this, the simpler, sharper focus that you can, you can be the better, you know, um, I, I've been working for almost 20 years, I still have a one page resume, you know, um, if, me like, too. Yeah, when I see multiple yeah. page resumes, I was like, is this allowed now? I always learn that this wasn't allowed. <laughs> I, I exactly same thing I saw I met someone once who was 25 years old who had a like a two-page resume I was like you've got all that to say I was like, <laughs> yeah. no but um I'm like I haven't done that much but okay um but like simple sharp focused you know to the point you really want to be you know doing that um and also um yeah I mean I guess that's really it you know yeah that's all I've, that's all one plug I would make for you guys that um there's so much opportunity for online learning now. And if you don't have summer jobs lined up or you don't have internships, I would just make a, a tout that it, find, find um, online learning that, that you do. And th those can also be big points, like, like general assembly is a good one, or um, I'd have to, you can find it. There's, there's all kinds of different, you know, online, certificates and that kind of stuff that you can do there if you don't have internships there are other ways to check boxes that show that you're a hard worker and that you're well-rounded and you're trying to get ahead so the last question i have for you guys uh, what is one piece of advice you wish you could tell your college self my my biggest thing is um try and be intentional. Like your days, your days matter. The people who are standing in front of you matter. The friends in front of you matter. Um, you know, it's really hard to claim what is, what is worth your time. And I think like, I still deal with that today of just what do I want to really put myself into and how do I just not be lazy and just you know stop watching whatever binge watching is available to me and nothing wrong with binge watching but claim the thing that you that, that you know you want to claim time is fleeting and you know you never know what doors it's going to open up yeah I'm trying to think um I think two things I would say are you know, stay curious, N never lose that. And, you know, can you, you touch on that too, like being the perpetual student? It's so, so important. You know, this is an industry that is changing. There's new mediums, there's new platforms, and there's new things all the time. And it's like, you will always be the most competitive version of yourself when you're on the cutting edge of that stuff. So stay curious is, is number one. And um, the other thing I would say, and this is something that my mother used to always, you know, say to me, and my mom was an, an older Nigerian woman, and she would always say, like, you know, when you go to New York, 
work hard. I've never known nothing to come from hard work. So that's just the truth. I've never known nothing to come from hard work. So just don't be afraid of it. Lean in, you know, you can do it. All right, thank you guys both. I don't know if we have any questions from the audience. If anyone has any questions they'd like to ask either Ken or Chioma, um, you guys are more than welcome to, to raise your hands or put it in the chat. Um, but thank you very much for, for your time and for your thoughtful answers. Yeah, and to those of you guys who are graduating, huge applause for you. It's what, what, a, what a journey I'm sure you've been on, but so many cool things ahead. That's right. Congratulations if you're graduating. You know, good luck to everybody. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a, it's been a real treat. Um, I will say when I graduated Penn State, it took me a solid five years to like get over and stop missing being there. So <laughs> oh. a question, a question for students. Does anybody have internships at agencies this summer or considering path within an advertising agency? I know there's a few out there. I don't know if you guys are on the call though. Okay. <laughs> ben, we've got ben. I'm the only one. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll I'll volunteer Ken and Shoma for if you have further questions on it. I do know that I forwarded a few internship opportunities, a few other agencies around too. So so there's opportunities out there. And I, I will say I've been impressed the agency world more, more so than others, I think has adapted to remote internships, I think, as well, in a way that I haven't seen. And so I and I, I think when I was when I was back in school, if there had been that opportunity to do that remote, it would have opened up a different different world and in some different ways to see some things. So but but Ken and Chima, thank you guys so much. This was this was great. I learned a lot I, and and loved hearing from you guys. So thank you so much. Yeah, it's a blast. Good to meet you guys. And um, yeah, have a good good end of semester. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody. <laughs>